Legendary actor Sir Sean Connery is widely known as the first actor to portray James Bond, and he went on to star in the next seven installments of the film. But recently, some secrets about his life have been revealed, which has shocked his adoring fans. Let's take a deep dive into the known and unknown parts of Sean Connery's life. Born as Thomas Sean Connery at the Royal Maternity Hospital in Edinburgh, Scotland, on August 25, 1930. He was named after his paternal grandfather. His parents had his brother Neil shortly after. Their father was Joseph Connery, a factory worker and lorry driver, and their mother was Euphemia McBain McLean, a cleaner. Connery was of Scottish descent, had a Christian background, and had a Roman Catholic father and a Protestant mother. He and his brother grew up in number 176 Fountain Bridge. It no longer exists, as the block has been demolished. Connery was very small in elementary school, but grew rapidly by age 12, reaching a height of 6 feet 2 by age 18. Due to his poor background and his parents' financial struggles, Connery couldn't have a formal education. He stopped schooling at the age of 9 and had to start working to help provide for the family. His first job as a child was as a milkman with St. Cuthbert's Cooperative Society. In 2009, Connery recalled a conversation in a taxi. When I took a taxi during a recent Edinburgh Film Festival, the driver was amazed that I could put a name to every street we passed. How come? He asked. As a boy, I used to deliver milk around here. In 1946, right after World War II, Connery made a decision to join the Royal Navy. It was while there he acquired two notable tattoos. These were important to Connery, as it stated on his official website. Unlike many tattoos, his were not frivolous. His tattoos reflect two of his lifelong commitments, his family and Scotland. One tattoo is a tribute to his parents and reads Mum and Dad, and the other is self-explanatory, Scotland forever. He trained in Portsmouth at the Naval Gunner School and in an anti-aircraft crew. He was later given the rank of an able seaman on HMS Formidable. But in 1949, Connery was discharged from service due to medical complications. He was diagnosed with duodenal ulcer, a generational illness that is contracted by the males in the family. After his discharge, he returned to casual work. He did different types of jobs to make ends meet, from working as a lorry driver to a lifeguard at Portobello swimming baths, as a laborer, and as an artist's model for the Edinburgh College of Art. He was a coffin polisher for a while before moving on to other jobs. But venturing into modeling was profitable at the time as he was paid 15 shillings an hour. Artist Richard DeMarco, a student at the time who painted several early pictures of Connery, described him as very straight, slightly shy too, too beautiful for words, a virtual Adonis. He began building his body when he was 18, and in 1951, he trained under Ellington, a former gym instructor in the British Army. He once contested for Mr. Universe, though the exact year varies from different reports. Connery's official website states he contested in 1950 and ranked third. Other sources state he contested in 1953 and ranked third in the junior class, unable to compete in the tall man classification. Connery was soon discouraged from bodybuilding because he frequently lost to Americans in competition because of their muscle and size. He complained that they wouldn't participate in athletic activity like he would, which would cause them to lose muscle mass. And truly, he was a football lover, having played for Bonnie Rig Rose as a kid. He received a trial to play with East Fife, and while on tour, he played in a local match against a team managed by Matt Busby a former manager of Manchester United. Reports state Busby was impressed with his physical prowess and offered Connery a contract worth 25 pounds a week, equivalent to 882 pounds in 2023, immediately after the game. Connery recalls, I realized that a top-class footballer could be over the hill by the age of 30, and I was already 23. I decided to become an actor, and it turned out to be one of my more intelligent moves. At first, Connery helped out backstage at the King's Theatre in late 1951 to supplement his income. During a bodybuilding competition held in London in 1953, one of the competitors mentioned that auditions were being held for a production of South Pacific, where Connery landed a small part as one of the CB's chorus boys. When the production reached Edinburgh, 
he was given the part of Marine CPL Hamilton Steves and was understudying two of the juvenile leads, and his salary was raised from pound 12 to pound 14, 10 shillings a week. The production returned the following year, out of popular demand, and Connery was promoted to the featured role of Lieutenant Buzz Adams, which Larry Hagman had portrayed in the West End. While shooting the film, Connery stayed in Edinburgh. He was a target of the Valdor gang, one of the most notorious gangs in the city. The first time he was attacked by them was in a billiard hall, where he hindered them from stealing his jacket. When he left the hall on his way home, he was followed by six members of the gang. Connery subtly led them to a 15-foot high balcony at the Palais de Danse. There, he single-handedly launched an attack against the gang members, grabbing one by the throat and another by the biceps and cracking their heads together. After that fight, he was treated with great respect by the gang and gained a reputation as a hard man. Over the period of production at the Opera House in Manchester, this was during Christmas in 1954, Connery developed interest in theater through the help of an American actor, Robert Henderson. Robert lent Connery copies of Ibsen works Hedda Gabler, The Wild Duck, and When We Dead Awaken. He also encouraged him to study works of famous writers like Proust, Tolstoy, Joyce, Shakespeare, and a few others. Robert encouraged him to take speaking lessons and even helped him secure parts at the Maida Vale Theatre in London. It wasn't his first time filming. He was an extra in Herbert Wilcox's 1954 musical Lilacs in the spring alongside Errol Flynn and Anna Neagle. Though Connery was enlisted as an extra, he wasn't financially stable and had to babysit for journalist Peter Noble and his wife, actress Mary Ann, as a part-time babysitter. He earned 10 shillings per night. On a fateful night, Connery met Hollywood actress Shelley Winters at Noble's house. She described Connery as one of the tallest and most charming and masculine Scotsmen she had ever seen, and later spent many evenings with the Connery brothers drinking beer. Connery was residing at TV presenter Lou Gardner's house during this period. Robert turned out to be a real friend and helper of Connery. He helped him land a role in a six pounds a week Q theater production of Agatha Christie's Witness for the Prosecution, during which he met and became friends with fellow Scott Ian Bannon. This role was followed by Point of Departure and A Witch in Time at Kew, a role as Pentheus opposite Yvonne Mitchell in The Bakke at the Oxford Playhouse, and a role opposite Jill Bennett in Eugene O'Neill's play Anna Christie. During his time at the Oxford Theatre, won a brief part as a boxer in the TV series The Square Ring, before being directed by Canadian director Alvin Rakoff. Alvin gave him multiple roles in The Condemned, which was shot on location in Dover, Kent. In 1956, Connery appeared in the theatrical production of Epitaph and played a minor role as a hoodlum in the Ladies of the Manor episode of the BBC television police series Dixon of Doc Green. This allowed him to act in small television parts in Sailor of Fortune and the Jack Benny program, a special episode filmed in Europe. Connery's breakthrough was his role as British secret agent James Bond. He didn't want to commit to a film series, but understood that if the film succeeded, his career would greatly benefit. Thanks to Dana Broccoli, wife of producer Albert Cubby Broccoli, Connery was able to land the role that would change his career. It was reported that she was the one who persuaded her husband that Connery was the perfect choice. The creator of the character James Bond, Ian Fleming, doubted Connery's casting, saying, he's not what I envisioned of James Bond looks, and I'm looking for Commander Bond and not an overgrown stuntman, adding that Connery is muscular, 6'2", and a Scot was unrefined. But by the influence of his girlfriend, Blanche Blackwell, who told him Connery had the requisite sexual charisma, Fleming changed his mind after the successful Dr. No premiere. He was so impressed he wrote Connery's heritage into the character. In his 1964 novel, You Only Live Twice, Fleming wrote that Bond's father was Scottish and from Glencoe in the Scottish Highlands. Between 1962 and 1967, Connery played 007 in Dr. No, From Russia with Love, Goldfinger, Thunderball, and You Only Live Twice, the first five Bond films produced by Eon Productions. After departing from the role, Connery returned for the seventh film, Diamonds Are Forever, in 1971. Connery made his final appearance as Bond in Never Say Never Again, 
1983 remake of Thunderball produced by Jack Schwartzman's Talia film. All seven films were commercially successful. James Bond, as portrayed by Connery, was selected as the third greatest hero in cinema history by the American Film Institute. His great performance as Bond owes much to stylistic tutelage from director Terence Young, who helped polish him while using his physical grace and presence for the action. Lois Maxwell, who played Miss Moneypenny, related that Terence took Sean under his wing. He took him to dinner, showed him how to walk, how to talk, even how to eat. The tutoring was successful. Connery received thousands of fan letters a week after Dr. No's opening, and he became a major sex symbol in film. After the release of the film Dr. No in 1962, the line, Bond, James Bond, became a catchphrase in the lexicon of Western popular culture. Film critic Peter Bradshaw writes, it is the most famous self-introduction from any character in movie history. Connery carried it off with icily disdainful style, in full evening dress with a cigarette hanging from his lips. The introduction was a kind of challenge or seduction, clearly addressed to an enemy. In the early 60s, Connery's James Bond was about as dangerous and sexy as it got on screen. The filming of Thunderball in 1965, Connery's life was in danger in the sequence with the sharks in Emilio Largo's pool. During the filming of Thunderball in 1965, Connery's life was in danger in the sequence with the sharks in Emilio Largo's pool. He had been concerned about this threat when he read the script. Connery insisted that Ken Adam build a special plexiglass partition inside the pool, but this was not a fixed structure, and one of the sharks managed to pass through it. He had to abandon the pool immediately. Although Bond had made him a star, Connery grew tired of the role and the pressure the franchise put on him, saying, I am fed up here with the whole Bond bit, and I have always hated that damn James Bond. I'd like to kill him. Michael Caine was among Connery's closest friends. Caine said of the situation, If you were his friend in those early days, you didn't raise the subject of Bond. He was and is a much better actor than just playing James Bond, but he became synonymous with Bond. He'd be walking down the street and people would say, Look, there's James Bond. That was particularly upsetting to him. While making the Bond films, Connery also starred in other films such as Alfred Hitchcock's 1964 Marnie and the following year, Sidney Lumet's The Hill, which film critic Peter Bradshaw regards as his two greatest non-Bond pictures from the 1960s. In the mid-1960s, Connery played golf with Scottish industrialist Ian Maxwell Stewart a connection which gave Connery the chance to direct and presenting the documentary film The Bowler and the Bunnet in 1967. The film described the Fairfield Experiment, a new approach to industrial relations carried out at the Fairfield Shipbuilding and Engineering Company, Glasgow, during the 1960s. The experiment was initiated by Stewart and supported by George Brown, the first secretary in Harold Wilson's cabinet, in 1966. Connery's later films included several box office and critical disappointments, such as First Night, Just Cause, The Avengers, and The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. However, he received positive reviews for his performance in Finding Forrester. He also received a Crystal Globe for outstanding artistic contribution to world cinema. In a 2003 UK poll conducted by Channel 4, Connery was ranked eighth on their list of the 100 greatest movie stars. The failure of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was especially frustrating for Connery. He sensed during shooting that the production was going off the rails and announced that the director, Stephen Norrington, should be locked up for insanity. Connery spent considerable effort in trying to salvage the film through the editing process ultimately deciding to retire from acting rather than go through such stress ever again. He turned down the role of Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings films, saying he did not understand the script. He was reportedly offered 30 million US dollars, along with 15% of the worldwide box office receipts, which would have earned him 450 million US dollars. He also turned down the opportunity to appear as Albus Dumbledore in the Harry Potter series, and the architect in the Matrix trilogy. In 2005, he recorded voiceovers for the From Russia With Love video game 
with recording producer Terry Manning in the Bahamas and provided his likeness. Connery said he was happy the producers, Electronic Arts, had approached him to voice Bond. After receiving the American Film Institute's Lifetime Achievement Award on the 8th of June 2006, he confirmed his retirement from acting. Connery's disillusionment with the idiots now making films in Hollywood was cited as a reason for his decision to retire. On June 7, 2007, he denied rumors that he would appear in the fourth Indiana Jones film, saying, Retirement is just too much damned fun. In 2010, a bronze bust sculpture of Connery was placed in Tallinn, Estonia, outside the Scottish Club, whose membership includes Estonian Scottophiles and a handful of expatriate Scots. In 2012, Connery briefly came out of retirement to voice the title character in the Scottish animated film Sir Billy. Connery served as executive producer for an expanded 80-minute version. Away from the camera, fans got to know that he was a supporter of the Scottish football club Celtic FC, having been introduced to the club by his father, a lifelong fan of the team. Later in life, Connery switched his loyalty to Celtic's bitter rival, Rangers FC, after he became close friends with the team's chairman, David Murray. He was a keen golfer, introduced to the game by his friend Ian Stewart. English professional golfer Peter Alice gave Connery golf lessons before the filming of the 1964 James Bond film, Goldfinger, which involved a scene where Connery, as Bond, played golf against gold magnate Auric Goldfinger at Stoke Park Golf Club in Buckinghamshire. Record major championship winner and golf course designer Jack Nicholas said, he loved the game of golf. Sean was a pretty darn good golfer, and we played together several times. In May 1993, Sean and legendary driver Jackie Stewart helped me open our design of the PGA Centenary course at Glen Eagles in Scotland. Concerning romantic relationships during the mid-1950s production of South Pacific, Connery dated Carol Sopel, a Jewish dark-haired beauty with a ballerina's figure, but their relationship didn't last because of her family's objection. He then dated Julie Hamilton, daughter of documentary filmmaker and feminist Jill Craigie. Given Connery's rugged appearance and rough charm, Hamilton initially thought he was an appalling person and was not attracted to him until she saw him in a kilt, declaring him to be the most beautiful thing she had ever seen in her life. He also shared a mutual attraction with jazz singer Maxine Daniels, whom he met whilst working in theater. He made a pass at her, but she told him she was already happily married with a daughter. Connery was married to actress Diane Salento from 1962 to 1974, though they separated in 1971. They had a son, actor Jason Joseph. Connery was separated in the early 1970s when he dated Deanne Cannon, Jill St. John, Lana Wood, Carol Mallory, and Magda Konopka. He remarried French-Moroccan painter Micheline Roquebrun from 1975 until his death. Outside acting, he was also highly regarded by people for his excellence in other aspects of life. He was awarded an honorary rank of Shodan, first Dan, in Kyokushin Karate. The Queen knighted him at an investiture ceremony at Holyrood Palace in Edinburgh on the 5th of July 2000. He had been nominated for a knighthood in 1997 and 1998, but due to his political views, he was denied until 2000. At this level of success, it became easy for Connery's secrets to leak out. In her 2006 autobiography, Salento, one of his romantic associations, alleged that Connery had abused her mentally and physically during their relationship. He had to cancel an appearance at the Scottish Parliament in 2006 because of controversy over his alleged support of the abuse of women. He denied the claims. However, he told Playboy magazine in 1965, I don't think there is anything particularly wrong in hitting a woman, though I don't recommend you do it in the same way you hit a man. He was also reported to have stated to Vanity Fair in 1993, there are women who take it to the wire. That's what they are looking for, the ultimate confrontation. They want to smack. Later in 2006, Connery was reported to have, he didn't believe that any level of abuse of women was ever justified under any circumstances. During his marriage to Micheline, it was revealed that he had an affair with the singer and songwriter Lindsay DePaul in the late 1980s. 
She later said she regretted the affair, not because he was married, but due to his views concerning domestic violence. Aside from the controversial stance he had on how to treat women, Connery was involved in politics. His Scottish roots and his experiences in filming in Glasgow's shipyards in 1966 inspired him to become a member of the center-left Scottish National Party, SNP, which supports Scottish independence from the United Kingdom. In 2011, Connery said, the bowler in the bunnet was just the beginning of a journey that would lead to my long association with the Scottish National Party. He supported the party both financially and through personal appearances. In 1967, he wrote to George Leslie, the SNP candidate in the 1967 Glasgow Pollock by-election, saying, I am convinced that with our resources and skills, we are more than capable of building a prosperous, vigorous and modern self-governing Scotland in which we can all take pride and which will deserve the respect of other nations. His funding of the SNP ceased in 2001 when the UK Parliament passed legislation prohibiting overseas funding of political activities in the UK. There were allegations against him as a tax exile. Connery released documents in 2003 showing he had paid £3.7 million in UK taxes between 1997 and 1998 and between 2002 and 2003. Critics pointed out that had he been continuously residing in the UK for tax purposes, his tax rate would have been far higher. In the run-up to the 2014 Scottish independence referendum, his brother Neil said Connery would not come to Scotland to rally independence supporters since his tax exile status greatly limited the number of days he could spend in the country. After Connery sold his Marbella Villa in 1999, Spanish authorities launched a tax evasion investigation, alleging that the Spanish Treasury had been defrauded of £5.5 million. Connery was subsequently cleared by officials, but his wife and 16 others were charged with attempting to defraud the Spanish Treasury. On October 31, 2020, aged 90, Connery died in his sleep at his home in the Lyford K community of Nassau in the Bahamas. His death was announced by his family and Eon Productions. Although they did not disclose the cause of death, his son Jason said he had been unwell for some time. A day later, his widow revealed he had dementia in his final years. Connery's death certificate was obtained by TMZ a month after his death, showing the cause of death was pneumonia and respiratory failure and the time of death was listed as 1.30 a.m. His remains were cremated, and the ashes were scattered in Scotland at undisclosed locations in 2022. In 2004, a poll in the UK Sunday Herald recognized Connery as the greatest living Scot, and a 2011 Euro Million survey named him Scotland's greatest living national treasure. In 2024, the Edinburgh International Film Festival established an annual award in Connery's honor. The Sean Connery Prize for Feature Filmmaking Excellence is a prize of 50,000 pounds given to the makers of a film chosen by audience vote from a short list of 10 feature films that receive their world premieres at the festival each year.